For me, hot hatches are everything. They're my life. I don't know anyone close to me that hasn't owned a hot hatch. And for me, since I passed my driving test, every single car I have has been a hatchback and it has evolved to this, my ST. And today's video for me is a nostalgic one because not only do I have my car, I also have this, the all new ST edition, a limited edition run car that Ford only made 300 of. Yes, all sold. And it's a twin test. And it's funny because usually my good friend Aaron from Car Obsession hosts these videos, but today I've finally taken over and I'm introducing it. And you're probably gathering, where's Aaron? He's there. Hello, mate. <laughs> good to see you. Good to see you. Yes. Hello, guys. Thank you for watching. <laughs> and um, yeah, you've obviously gathered now that he's going to be helping me in today's video because I unfortunately can't drive both cars at the same time. Not but enough, not enough talent. No, oh, you would say that. You would say that. <laughs> but yeah, of course, the ST edition is a car that unfortunately Aaron hasn't had the opportunity to get hold of because I'm one of the last people to get it from Ford UK. Sorry you're to lucky, rub it in, mate. You're absolutely lucky. Sorry to rub it in. Expletive. <laughs> but hey, enough of the waffling. We're going to get on to the famous part of the video, the bit that we haven't scripted at all, top trumps. Let's get to it. So we're going to start with zero to 62, or if you're in somewhere in Europe, zero to 100. So ladies first. <laughs> or should oh, I say, oh, age, age before beauty. There you go. Is that better? Well, I've got something else, but it's a bit more rude, so I won't say, I won't say that. Uh, right, so this, ladies and gentlemen, will hit 62 miles per hour in a rapid 6.5 seconds. Wow, that's pretty good going. That is pretty good going. Now, everything that I'm going to uh, base this car on is going to be standard, even though I have the MP215 kit from Mountain on this. I thought it'd only be fair as the ST edition, even though it being limited edition, there is no performance increase that I know of. I should really and get out of the way. I'm, I'm blocking the car. People don't want to see me. You want yeah. to see the car. So for me, it's 6.9 seconds, which is respectable considering that. 6.9? Yeah. Well, let's call it seven seconds, round it up. That's pedestrian. <laughs> oh, right, just, okay, okay. Just, but I'm going to say 6.9. You know, I, I, I can walk to 62 <laughs> faster than that. In fact, I'll do it now. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Right, the next one is top speed. For me, it's 139 miles an hour, only in Mexico. <laughs> Tepid. 143 miles per hour. Wow. So it seems that Ford have progressed and evolved the yep. ST so far. Newer is better. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Tall is better as well. Power. Now, brake horsepower for me is 182 brake horsepower. Now, you're probably going to interrupt me and say, well, that's wrong. Well, it's not because this is actually 182 horsepower all the time, apart from the overboost feature, which then takes this car to 197. But because it's temporary, it's only 182. Yep, in, I think in Europe, Ford can't claim it. So yeah. not, even though, let's face it, this is 190. But for the, for, the guys in the, for, for the guys in the US, it is effectively 200. Exactly. So. And in that respect, I kind of match you because this is 197. Yes. Great horsepower. Yes, and it's, um, that is spectacular considering the engine in that thing. Yeah, it's very impressive. Newton meters and foot pounds. Now, I'm going to do both because I know you like foot pounds and no, I like newton meters. No, I like newton meters. Oh, okay, so we both like newton meters. Yeah. But for you guys watching, we'll give them to you in both. So for newton meters for me, it is 290 and foot pound is 214. I didn't realise this, this was 290. I thought it would have been a bit less because I'm also 290. Oh, which really? Means, yeah, this is 290 wow. because the uh, the Puma ST has got 30 more yeah. torque because it's bigger and heavier. That's 320 and this yeah. is 290. Because with, so, the, with yeah. the MP215 kit, it actually takes it to 320 newton meters. Oh, does it? Yeah, same and I thought that was 320 standard. standard but no, no, this is um, 290. Yeah. Um, an important Next. one now because I know I'm going to win this one and you know what's coming. Price. Yes, the price. Yeah. So I've broke this down into both an ST3. <laughs> is that the time? I must be, I must be going. <laughs> an ST3 and an ST200. The reason I've done that is because, of course, this is a limited edition car and I thought an ST200 can be a good comparison against them. So I'll let you start with this one, mate. I'll let you take the reins. It's um, uh, <laughs> 27,000. Sorry, mate. I don't think they can hear you. 27,000 
and 75 pounds so a little over 27 grand and what but, do you um before we go on to Gingy, what do you think of that as a hot hatch fan as someone that is in I, love with these sort of cars i love a fiesta st but 27 grand for a fiesta does seem a bit extortionate um so ford uk yeah it's a bit it's a bit steep for a fiesta yeah, definitely. But bearing in mind a bit more you get yourself a puma st or a focus st so and, and this is where yeah. it's going to be an even more big of a disappointment because this as an st3 cost just under 20 grand 20 grand 19,935 pounds to be precise see that's that's value that is crazy isn't it that's that was about eight grand less and even for the st200 which had the uh, mounting calibration put well, on it the mp215 along with a diff less. along with a diff and um the color as well that was 22,935 pounds so the price difference that's crazy what's that five grand different yeah it's a very nice blue. <laughs> As your blue, I love that colour by the way. It's a lovely yeah. colour. Um, it's, it's Smurf blue, that's what I, I'm, <laughs> gonna call, I'm gonna call this Papa Smurf. Yeah, it's, it sounds a little bit better, doesn't it? Papa Smurf, <laughs> instead, of, instead of Azure blue. Mar full marketing, come on, employ us, employ us now. Right, the penultimate top trumps question. Before is, we get too wet. Is the weight. Now, hot hatches, you want them to be light. You don't want them to be heavy because it ruins the driving dynamic when you're blasting for a B road and what these cars are made for is B-road blasting. Now, for me, I think I've got this again. Yeah, all right. So- I'll let you have this one. The weight for mine is 1,088 kilograms. Yes, a lightweight. Yeah, fair enough. Come on, mate. What have you got? Lard. <laughs> That's what I've got. Um, hey, you're, not that, you're not that big. <laughs> I thought we were friends. <laughs> 1,262 kilograms, so. That is mental. Yeah, get, well, extra extra safety systems and yeah. so forth. And uh, uh, rumor has it this paint's really heavy. <laughs> so. What, another 200 kilograms? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So t take the paint off, put it back to primer, <laughs> and then they're even Stevens. So I'm trying to glow this back. I'm, I'm two up now, I'm two up. Apart from the rest of them, which you, I've well, you, failed at. You, you've lost this quite dramatically. <laughs> and I think uh, we're going to end on boot size, which is sort of a boring topic, but for consumer advice, I thought we'd throw it in there. Now, me, 290 litres. The Fiesta hasn't got the biggest of boots. Is it the biggest in class? In no, 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 far from say. it. No, it's, it's what actually... is the biggest in class from the top of your head? Uh, for, for, for the Mark 7 generation? No, 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 just in like, in, in like rival sense. Um, the Polo the, maybe? The Seat Ibiza and the yeah. Polo, yeah. they're 355 wow. really? gra uh, uh, not grams, uh, litres from memory, but I think there's another Super Mini that's yeah. bigger, but I can't think of what it is off, off the yeah, top of my head. Yeah, even that, that's but, crazy um, different, isn't but it? But yeah, no, it's, um, 60 the, the Fiesta is wow. a bit cramped for space. Ha-ha! Um, yeah, ha -ha. I know. 292. That means I can fit in an extra two-litre bottle of Pepsi Max whilst you go thirsty. <laughs> and that's not an ad for Pepsi. That's just the first drink that came to mind. <laughs> Other drinks are available. Like water. Drink water, kids. Yeah, yeah. Be, like, be like Ronaldo. <laughs> yeah, agua. Yeah. <laughs> Even though we're getting a lot of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's it of the top trumps. Wasn't scripted at all, even though I've got my phone out in my hand. Don't shoot me down. But yeah, let's get on to the driving. Um, both me and Aaron are gonna take turns in both cars. Yeah. And we're gonna see what these cars are truly about. So seeing as Aaron's come all the way down from Sunny Worthing, but he hasn't brought the sun with him. Which, nah, uh, no, no, I left, heaved about. left it behind, mate. <laughs> so yeah, I thought, um, since he's come down from a sunny Worthing, no, we're not a good win, unfortunately, this weekend, but hey, we've got an ST edition with us, so we got, we, we can't got, complain. We've got the lovely sights of... Billy Ricky. Bi Billy Ricky. Yeah, we're the home going to see uh, Gavin and Stacey. Yeah, so I <laughs> beat me to us, let's try to see uh, the home of Gavin and Stacey. So yeah, I thought um, I'd, it'd be rude not to give Aaron the ST edition to drive, and uh, we're gonna, the, the beauty of this video is that even though it's a twin test, it's gonna be like a review, a full review. Um, but it's going to be a little bit more interesting than being just consumer based the entire time. It's going to be lots of banter. Banter! Are um, we going left or right? Just go right, mate. Go right. Just go right. Yeah, go right. See where it takes us. Um, so, yeah, we are in the ST edition. And uh, Aaron, I'm going to let you take it away, seeing as you're in the driver's seat in the hot oh. spot. First oh. of all, actually, have you yes. got it in sport mode? No, you don't. Well, I haven't. And 
all the eagle-eyed viewers are going to be like, well, you didn't put it in sport mode, I could tell. Do you remember that with the BMW video? Yes. I didn't have it in sport mode. And you, even you, like, you silly sausage. <laughs> and someone actually went, questioned it in the, in, a que- in the comment, and they went, you didn't have it in sport mode, did you? And I went, how the hell did you know that? But um, <laughs> credit to him, credit to him, whoever he was. What do you remember most about the Mark 8? The Mark 8 is a more refined beast. It's, yeah. it's I'd say it's got a, a broader appeal. And some may argue that's a good thing, some may argue that's a bad thing. Um, yeah, I mean, for, from my point of view, because obviously I own the Mark 7, I, I, I do like it. I think this is a little bit too, they've gone a little bit too overboard on the grown up sense, I think. Um, oh, but, I, don't, I don't know about that. Yeah. Oh, I've got this uh, bog roll. Might need it in a bit. <laughs> it's so quick. And this isn't even mapped. It's crazy. <laughs> and it's a little three-cylinder engine. Yeah, left it. <laughs> 1.5 litres. Yeah, just, and it this and considering it's missing a cylinder it's, on the Mark Seven, you it, don't you don't know it's you don't know it's a three-cylinder, do you? It's really? So brawny, and it oh. sounds fantastic. Just listen to that noise. <laughs> Mark Eight, it's got a broader appeal. Yeah, it's more comfortable. It's got more mod quads. That's not to say that the Mark Seven feels dated, but well, to be fair, the dashboard is not a particularly great area is it it looks as if um yeah it looks what in this or in the mark 7 the, the mark 7 the, the dash for those tiny i like the mark 7 dash i like it i think it's more because i've grown up with it I, I, of course i've had the mark 7 z's i guess and i've been around mark 7 sts for quite a long time i yeah. actually like it i think it's proportioned very nicely mate, well, of course in here mate, it's, it's very nice it's got more buttons than, than the starship enterprise yeah Should i have to say the sony head unit is a yeah is a bit of an eyesore but the rest of it it's, I, I would have actually preferred to have the normal uh, stereo system. You, you've obviously seen them as well. The, yeah. They haven't got all loads and loads of buttons. But you can't be in here. But this is a newer car. It's got. A, they've obviously had to change it. And it's yeah. Not, it is nice in here. Oh, a little crackle on the yeah. exhaust there. Which again, you don't get with a Mark Seven. Nope. But like a little rally car. That will be coming soon with mine. That will be coming soon. So compared to a standard Mark Eight Fiesta ST. The front end has been lowered by 15 millimetres, that's one five, oh. not five zero, that'd, yeah. be, that'd be crazy. He's read the spec sheet. And the, and the rear has been <laughs> dropped by 10 millimetres. Yes. This car's on coilovers, yeah. uh, which are manually adjustable, so if you do want to adjust them, you're going to have to get in your hands and knees and get out the old spanner or get it up on a ramp. Yeah, so they've got, um, you have to, they're not top mount adjustable, you have to um, adjust them from the bottom. So you can adjust them, you can adjust the compression and the rebounds. You get 16 um, different settings for the compression and 12 for the rebound so it just allows you to that's what makes this more dynamic now you can tailor the car to have however you drive it so if you predominantly want if you're predominantly on b roads all the time you can set the car up play around with it to be nice nice that way or if you take it on track you want to stiffen it up because there's obviously the track's nice and the condition of a track's really nice and smooth um so you, you, it's definitely opened up the car a lot more um yeah. without ruining the ride people yeah have, exactly have the, have yeah, that, pre- that's the one thing that really surprised me because I, I drove the Puma ST and although that it did ride very nice not not a slow speed though I found that a little bit a little bit crashy at like um, slow speeds but with this because it's got two-way adjustability it's sort of like dampening both both um, slow slow and fast speed driving that diff is fantastic by yeah. the way even on these kind of wet greasy roads I was expecting I'll tell a, you a now, lot of wheel speed. I'll but tell you no. now, experience, experience in this Quave diff has actually made me jump the priority for mine to get a different mine. Yeah, don't get me wrong, there is a little bit of talk steer, but yeah. you, you have to expect that. It's not exactly. as if I'm wrestling this like a mad bear. No. It, it gives you a little bit of fight, but. Not like it, a Mark II Focus RS. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not trying to Ooh. wrestle its way out, out of your hands. Um, but people have this kind of pre notion that coilovers can be terribly uncomfortable and that isn't always the case i've got coilovers on my mx5 and they yeah, got, yeah. that rides actually really nicely and this also rides not nicely and one thing i much prefer in the mark 8 compared to the mark 7 is the seating position Should do a right and then a left straight away the yeah in the mark 7 although the vicaros are fantastic yeah and i think you prefer the vicaros in that don't you in, in the mark in, 7 in the mark 7 yeah, yeah. um you, you'll probably you're actually probably agree with me when you sit in it. I just find these Recaros a little bit harder. 
and I think you'd struggle a little I, bit more on a longer distance uh, journey. But me. if you think about it, how many miles has this car done? It's not quite that a, many. It's done quite a bit, considering. But not as not as many as your Fiesta, though. But yeah, but I'm talking about like I, I use my car like every day, which is what it should be used for. Um, but the seating position is is so so much lower in this compared to the Mark 7. The Mark 7, you almost feel like you're sat on yeah, the car yeah, as opposed yeah. to in it, whereas this, Definitely. you feel much more hunkered down yeah. and it feels a lot more sporty. Yeah, and that's, even, that's what you want in a, even car, with a car like this. You, you, you need to feel sporty. You can adjust You can adjust both Mark 7 and Mark 8 seats, but in this, it's definitely, yeah, you do sit a lot lower. <laughs> but I think that's more of a complaint for you because you, you're obviously a tall, taller lad. Green giant, well, green giant I'm, standard. Well, I was blessed with height. What can I say? <laughs> yeah, I'm vertically challenged, so yeah. But no, I don't. I don't find that as much of an issue. But I can understand from your point of view. You want to sit lower down. Gear change is fantastic. This six-speed manual. It's slick, snappy, and it really is a joyous gearbox to use. And the kind of gearbox you you want want and hope for in a car like this. So I find the throw a little bit long. Yes, but you've got a short shifter in your Mark Seven, haven't you? I mean, yeah, not? but even still, I just find it like when you again when you get into mine, you will you will go bloody hell. It's a night and day difference here. Even when I just literally picked up the car earlier, it's obviously filmed today. When I jumped oh. in, when I jumped in it, oh. I was like, oh my god, what a difference! What do you think of the brakes? I think the brakes are good. Yeah, a bit, um, a bit. Overly snappy, I think, a little bit um, bitey. The, the, yeah, they are a bit sharp, yeah. but I'd say the, the feedback through the pedal is it's, nice and progressive. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they don't bite. Uh, as, well, they do, but what, I'm, but what I mean is they don't they don't feel too harsh. They do feel a bit sharp yeah, in, yeah. in their performance. Yeah. But when, I first big, when I first got it <laughs> delivered, I was like, oh, I was almost going to go through the windscreen. I was out like... <laughs> but I'd rather have brakes are a bit too sharp yeah. as opposed to but a, bit, a bit too in all fairness, blunt, if that makes sense. In all fairness, I have got used to it. It's something you just... You sort of live with it as the time goes on yeah. pretty quickly in that in that sense yeah the pedal placement is lovely you can heal and tone yeah. this yeah definitely with yeah little fuss but yeah the pedal weight is fantastic i've said this before about uh, the fiesta st and the puma st yeah the the weight of the pedals is perfect not too heavy but not too light i think that's just bang on it's delicious it's yeah really nice tires as well Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's. They're very good tyres. Very good tyres. Yeah. Left or right here? Uh, just a, a left, just straight up around the bend. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of Michelin's and um, yeah, they perform on the uh, Fiesta ST very well. I remember when I drove the uh, ST line, the um, the less sporty Fiesta. Yeah. Uh, that was wearing a Michelin uh, Pilot Sport yeah. 4 tyres and, and yeah, that was it was fantastic in the corners. Yeah, definitely. And I'm a big fan of Eagle F1s, as you, as you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, these Pilot 4Ss, we've been having a lot of rain this week, and they perform just as well as in the dry. They yeah. Are I, sublime. I've still, got the the left I've still got the confidence to push the car. Unfortunately, I've got a bit of traffic in front of me. Actually, and, straight, go straight. And of course, I've got that that lovely Quaif LSD. Yeah, the Quaif diff does make a big, big difference. It really does. Yeah, look, look how uneven this road is, and it's wet as well, but... Yeah. I've still got the confidence and I've still got the ability yeah. to put the power down relatively cleanly. If any of you are watching and you're looking to buy a Fiesta ST, because you still can buy one, just not obviously any of the limited edition cars, yeah. um, recommend Performance Pack because it's they've now made it an optional extra again. Or was it on the Puma that it was standard and they put it back to an optional extra? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I definitely recommend the performance pack, which gives you the diff. It just yeah. transforms the car, it really does. That alone is, is worth the yeah. um, 950 quid. Exactly. But in this, it's standard. They chucked everything from an ST3 with all the options into one price. Um, well, you'd hope so. At, yeah, for at that, least what, at least over £27,000. Yeah, exactly. exactly right. One thing I would take away, because I'm seeing just from a Mark 7 point of view, is the infotainment having Apple. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I know yeah. it's a very small thing, but nowadays it makes such a big difference to like, when you're driving. You can just enjoy your music and stuff like that. Um, also, the sound system in this, you've got the BNO Play system, which oh, is yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I love it. I love listening to music. I love listening to music. Yeah. Um, and yeah, in the Mark Seven, it's awful. It's dog poo. <laughs> it's a bit politely. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, mate. We've got B Road in front of us. What are you doing? So you should oh. hit national speed limit, mate. Give me a chance. Oh, 
Where's that toilet roll? Oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. The question is, do I need it or do you? Both. <laughs> Woo. Tear me off a bit. <laughs> well, that was a lovely rev match. That'd be the rev limiter. He thinks he's in a Civic now. <laughs> VTEC, yo! <laughs> You're going to love this car, no matter what, but would you pay, I asked this question in the comparison video, would you pay the extra premium Ooh. for um, this over an ST3? I'm probably going to think that you're going to say no today, it's not worth it. No. No. No, the thing is, a car like this, to a degree, is a collector's edition. Yeah. Um, collector's item, sorry. Yeah. Um, but that also leads on to another question of that, Oh, it's, a, it's a Fiesta, even though it's a limited edition one, is it going to hold as much money and be as valuable as a Focus RS limited edition? It's not. No, but I, I still think it will hold its value and possibly yeah. Which appreciate. is interesting because the ST200, the Mark 7, I mean, you can pick them up still for like 15 grand. Yes, it's, I know, it's crazy. I mean, they are like, they were 23 grand new, but if you look at a standard Fiesta, they're like seven, eight grand for a, for a fairly decent one. Yeah. So they're still, yeah, they, they still hold their money, but don't buy this car to have it sitting in the garage. It's just no, it's no, cruelty, uh, really, isn't it? I would buy a standard Fiesta, um, and the money I, I saved that I would have saved if I yeah. were to buy this, spend it on mods, exactly. Yeah, get even get a freeway adjustable coilover system if you wanted to splash out, get, yeah, get more power. That's one thing that disappoints me. That, that this isn't faster. Yeah, it hasn't got. It hasn't got. I know they obviously don't work with Mansion anymore. Full Performance are now their own brand. Yeah. Um, so it's a little, probably a little bit tricky for them to do certain things. But yeah, it's just a little bit disappointing that there isn't something that truly stands out apart from the colour. Um, and the wheels and the and the yeah yeah the are, wheels are different, which save eight kilograms. Of yeah, over, over over that to, to, which doesn't seem a lot, but it's where it matters. The and wheels. it's and it's unsprung weight. Yeah, exactly. So and you can definitely notice that in turning. So if you jumped into an ST3, yeah, you would definitely notice turning a lot more with this. You'd, yeah, you'd, it'd be a noticeable difference. But majority of the people that would have bought these probably would have been their first Mark Eight because it it would have been a bit silly. If you bought this and you already owned an ST3 or an ST2, it just wouldn't have made sense. You no, trading it in. Um, but you you knew that I had an allocation for performance edition. Yeah, I, I still think you're mad for giving it up. Yeah, I know. But <laughs> you, you know why I had to. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, house, house, exactly, is not, house is not cheap. More, exactly, and it's sort of at that time in my life, it was more important to do that. So, yep. But um, yeah, that that it made sense for me to get the performance edition because I didn't have a Mark 8 at all and. I wanted I wanted a hot hatch, so um, again I don't know why I was mad enough to consider paying twenty six and a half grand for one, but yeah. hey, I didn't. But yeah, I think it's now time to jump into my car, Gingy. Um, I might let you drive it. Oh, so hang on, it's going to be a twin test, but you're not going to be driving either car. Actually, yeah, you've just convinced <laughs> me. Yeah, no, that's it. No, I'm driving. I'm driving, ignore me. Reverse. <laughs> But yeah, enough of that. Before I make any more mistakes, <laughs> I'm gonna, we're going to jump in the Mark 7, I think. Definitely. <laughs> first things first, of course, this car is modified. So, not. Oh, hello. What's that? It's just a dash cam telling me I'm being an idiot. Oh, well, I can tell you, you're an idiot. You don't need the dash cam for that. Yeah, you pay good money for that. You, you can pay me nothing, I'll tell you, you're an idiot. Um, this is, of course, modified. Yes. Uh, so, a bit difficult to compare it to the ST edition, although that is, that is technically modified. Yeah, it's, in, at, it's, in, at the point, it's at the point in its life where I haven't gone mad with it yet. Yeah, but that will probably happen. Already, the ride is firmer. Yeah, um, you can feed it, can't you? Now, of course, I'm in the passenger seat, not the driver's seat. I wouldn't say I'm uncomfortable, but it's definitely kind of. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Told you, mate. Is that in, is that invitation to the uh, falling down the stairs open for you? <laughs> Not just yet. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe if, if we hit a pothole. I'll ask that question um, again later on. I'd say this. Well, I was going to say this feels more responsive, but I would do. It's, it has got more power, so that's a really stupid thing to say. But it feels more. It feels more alert. 
And one thing I like about the Mark 7 as opposed to the Mark 8 is even in standard form, the Mark 7 just feels a bit more edgy in its in its power delivery. It feels yeah, a bit yeah. more feels a bit more raw, a bit more aggressive, whereas the power delivery delivery in the Mark market just feels a bit more linear. It just yeah. doesn't feel it's quite. It's not to take away from the uh, 1.5 Dragon. Oh engine, no, 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 no! It's a very good engine, but this is it's more solid. Yeah, it, I don't know whether that's a mental thing. It's just because it's because it's a four pot over a three pot. I don't know. There's lo there's lots of things about it. Even just experiencing it, it just feels more. As soon as you, it's just. Oh. It, feels, it, it feels a bit more spiky. Hey, traction. Now, of course, we haven't got the uh, we haven't got the, the, the joys of, a, of an NSD in this. Yeah. But when you when you even at this at this power, it doesn't cry for it. So yeah, we've covered the ride, we've covered the engine, the yeah. interior. Now that's obviously the biggest difference between this and a Mark Mark A, isn't it? Yeah, the um, I'm sorry about the, the 90s call. They want their, their interior design back. So yeah. well, what's and this? What are these small buttons? What's, what's all this? And now we, yeah, we live in a world where we have lots more creature comforts like Android Auto and Apple CarPlay and a decent infotainment system. This is, yeah, far behind now, isn't it? One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, I mean, you need a five, you need a, a magnifying glass to even read what's on on the Sony head unit. It's ridiculous. Oh, okay, he's counting now. It's good he went to school. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give up. It's, it's <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's got a million buttons. <laughs> yeah. Right. This this bit here is a bit. Uh, right. I'm, I'm exaggerating. Oh my god. Oh. Can I take that invitation to go down the stairs now? <laughs> okay, I'm exaggerating. It's, about, it's probably got half a million buttons. It's just <laughs> just uh, it's, it's a sensory overload. It's just oh, it hurts my head just looking at it. I'm not going to do it anymore. The good thing is, how, though, however, you're not worried about that because you're concentrated on the road and having an awesome time. That's exactly. what this is for. Seeing as the Mark 7, you can no longer buy new, pricing on the market is unreal and it makes it even more value for your money. It does. Well, I was saying on my Instagram story earlier that pound for pound, if you're looking for a hot hatch that, that's, that's got great performance out of the box and massive tuning potentials yeah. I really don't think you can do much better than a exactly. Mark 7 Fiesta ST because um, yeah it's just such good cars and Ford got the you know got such a good formula when it made this car I think it helped that that is it's, it's competitors the Renault Clio RS which went to a North Hill gearbox only which I still think is mad yeah. the Peugeot 208 GTI was wasn't a bad car but for driver dynamics it just in my opinion at least just couldn't match this car I think Ford released this car at the right time. Yeah, which literally, it blew well, away. They had a massive hiatus of turbocharged fast forwards, didn't they? I mean, you you can't include the Focus in the mix because that was a bigger car, as in not Fiesta wise. Yeah, there wasn't a turbocharged Fiesta in like what I'm going to say RS Turbo days. Surely, it's got it's got to be, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so there's, there's bound to be someone that that will correct yeah. us. No, you're wrong. Yeah, maybe Gary from Car Focus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Gary, don't troll us. The Mark 8's yet to win over a lot of people because this was so good. And uh, as you said, it was at the right... To be fair, it could have been at any time this car would have been a success. It really could. Agreed, yeah. I, I just think when this car came out, I think for Ford's sake, all the planets aligned and it just it yeah. just helped to, to really give this car the reputation that, that it's got. And the Mark 8 hasn't really got any... It has got competition in the form of the i20m which yeah. I'm, I'm hoping to drive later next week so head over to my channel <laughs> check that out <laughs> um, or the gr yaris which you can't really compare to a mark no. 8 because the gr yaris is almost in its own class yeah, exactly as well it's as that. it's you know almost well not almost pushing civic type r power but you see a lot of the comparisons people have done is normally more towards cars like the like the Civic Type R as opposed to a Mark 8 Fiesta ST. So the GR Yaris is kind of its its own entity because it's such a unique car for yeah. what it is and how it's been designed. So I'd say the Fiesta, the Mark 8's greatest rival now is the i20N from Hyundai. Mm. The Clear RS is dead. Yeah. The 208 GTI is dead. You can still get the Polo GTI if I'm not mistaken, but. The SG is now, isn't it? Is, yeah, and are you going to have as much fun in that as you are in no. the Mark 8? You, you're not. You're That's going to feel like driving a smaller Golf. It's going to yeah, be it, very. It, it's going gonna, it's gonna to feel very composed, yeah. and I'm sure it will be a good car to drive, but it won't have, in my opinion, it won't have the same fun factor yeah, as, as the Mark 8. I definitely agree with that. And that's it, you know, you've got 
it's mad to think that a lot of manufacturers are moving away from small hot hatches, yet Hyundai has kind of stuck its flag up, as it were, and said, oh my God, it feels so strong. Hyundai stuck its flag flag up, we're going we're, we're to make a small hot hatch, yeah. even though that, that genre is sadly slowly dying. Um, but going back to the comparison, that's, that's one thing uh, I'd say standard Mark 7 compared to standard Mark 8. I find the engine, it it revs it revs all the way to, to the red line. Whereas yeah. I find the Mark 8, it dies off a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it does peak, it does peak um, off. Yeah. It, 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 kind of, runs, it, kind of, it runs out of path. And yeah, it exactly. Another gear yeah, to push it through. You took the words out of my mouth. You kind yeah. of get to a point where so you think it's no, you may as well change them early because there's no real more power to be had out of yeah. it. Now I'm sure a map would was, would oh, easily cure that. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, and that's, again, yeah. uh, where I think the ST edition should have had some power increase or some tweak or some tune. So, mate, I think it's that time now where we uh, sit back and conclude on this and uh, Mate, bring the ST back into, uh, into try, existence. Trying to choose between the two cars, we were like trying to choose your favourite child. You, you, sh- you shouldn't. You shouldn't. It shouldn't be allowed. Yeah, I know, man. I know. Um, it's really difficult. I, I love both cars. I love what they both stand for. I love what they offer. It, you may as well ask me. Do I, do, I, do I want to keep my my left arm or my, or my right arm? <laughs> yeah. It, it, that's 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 literally where I am. <laughs> I, I'm I'm so stuck on the fence. I'm getting splinters up my bum. <laughs> uh, I've, I haven't got the toilet paper in this car, mate. Uh, Sorry, well, it didn't come as standard. Really, in that situation, I think tweezers would be better. <laughs> and some, I don't know, some salplum or something. Oh. Some, some antiseptic. Um, I, I I don't know. I, I think you're going to, have to go first. I, I'm still deciding because I I love both cars. Yeah. I think I need to jump out, mate, and get some fresh air because I'm, I'm flustered. I don't know what to do. No. I think we should get back the ST edition and have a chat and have uh, a chat and conclude this very uh, dilemma that we're in right now. Mm. It's a good problem to have, though. It is. It is. But before we do, one last boost. Go on. Oh. Oh. Love it. Oh, I don't know where to start, mate. I really don't. Well. If you don't, how do you think I feel? Uh, yeah. I feel. Get, get your words out, Aaron. What um, I'm going to say straight away is that the Mark 8 is definitely a true representation to evolution from this, yeah. the Mark 7. It is, um, yeah, it's definitely moved on a lot. Yeah, you can argue it's grown up a lot more. Yeah. And it's kind of taken away some of the essence from this and disappeared. But at the same time, it has taken a lot from this and improved it on this. Yeah, they're they're both very good cars in their own right, with their own kind of uh, own quirks and nuances. Yeah. <sighs> the only way I can come to any kind of conclusion, for me personally, is to put it like this: that is the better car to drive. Yeah. That is a bit more exciting. Agreed. And for, and if I had to choose one of these for a B road blast, I'd go for the Mark Seven. Yeah. However, for a car to live with every yeah. day. Yeah. I'd choose the Mark 8 to do you know do what? So. I've got an idea how to solve this. I'm going to start a GoFundMe page so we can buy both. Yes. There we go. Or, That's or, it. We've or done. Let's put it this way. Ford UK, don't worry about collecting the car from Chris. I can, <laughs> I can just keep it. I can look after it for you. you know, yeah. I, can, I, can, I can tuck it up at night, You know, make sure it gets the right fuel. Yeah, and like, I can uh, every so often come down and check exactly. it if it's okay. Yeah. Uh, warm it up for Aaron when he needs it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly, but they're both cracking cars. I yeah. think I think that's the, the that's the the one conclusion I can draw yeah. that that makes any kind of sense. They're both great cars in their own right, and can you go wrong with either? No, no. you really, really can't. And I know our verdict doesn't help you guys if you're looking <laughs> in the market for either one of these cars. Personally, I would just say get out and drive both of them. And yeah, make the decision for yourselves. A- agreed, agreed. But hey, there you go. Our conclusion. A very <laughs> iffy one, especially for a, 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 a twin test slash full a review. Very, a very questionable uh, conclusion at best, uh, tenuous. But um, either way, we do hope you've enjoyed this video and watched uh, two clowns muck about and two hot yes. patches. Thank you very, thank you very much. Because yeah. without you guys, well, 
I'd have this regardless, but without <laughs> you guys, I wouldn't have had things like this to play with. I've had two press cars on a trot in two weeks. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm speechless, I really am. But if you guys have enjoyed this video, please remember to like, subscribe, and of course, do comment. It. Do it now. What do you think of both the Mark 7 and Mark 8? Please leave your feedback below. I love answering questions. Aaron does as well. So we'll both be in the video communicating with you guys as always. But yep. until next time, I will see you all soon. Goodbye.